All right, I'm now going to go inside the organ. Hello, I'm David Asher Brown. In this video, I got the opportunity to not only learn how an organ works, but actually get to go inside of a physical organ, to walk inside, see all the pipes up close, look at the differences. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you haven't already, please take a moment to like and subscribe to this channel. I'm here with Adam Gilberti, museum scientist at UCLA, and we're going to learn how an organ works. Adam, I'm wondering if you could show me how we increase or decrease volume on an organ. So if you look here at the box here, all of the pipes are actually in a box. And um, with a pedal on the foot, it kind of looks like a gas pedal, I can open or close these blinds on the box. This allows me to do crescendos, a crescendos, and dynamic. <laughs> switch that turns something on in the organ. Um, you can actually think of it more of a start than a stop. The original stops, you push them in, and that would actually stop air from going to that rank of pipes. Oh, that's why it's called that. Okay. Um, if all the stops are pulled out, then the entire organ is playing. So when you're pulling out all the stops, you're literally making every set of pipes play on the you're organ. You're literally making everything happen at right. the same time. And so pulling out the stops is basically using everything. And then you push them in and stop air to certain ones, so that you can get, um, so that you can get that sound isolated. Like if I want just this flute isolated, I have everything else stopped so that you can just hear that flute. And w so when you're playing a flute sound, how is it making it sound like a flute in the organ? How are, how are the flute pipes different from? Uh, could we hear like? Do you have something that sounds closer to a trumpet, maybe? Yeah. Um, so there are four basic families of organ pipes, just like we have four families in the orchestra. Right. Um, the first family uh, is called the diapason family. A lot of, um, on a lot of instruments and cultures, this is just called principal, because it's like the principal thing, all right? To our ears, sounds like a cross between a horn and a flute. <laughs> It's the principal rank that makes what they call a principal chorus, which is the, the heart and soul of the organ. Yeah. It's also something that's not meant to sound like any other orchestral instrument. It is the organ sound. And if I put it in different octaves, you'll hear. You know, you'll hear that sound. You know, that, that you associate with organs, probably. The next family is flutes. Flutes uh, tend to be, this is not a hard roll, but tend to be a little softer voiced. Um, here's an example of a flute. The next family um, is reeds. So reeds are pipes that actually have reeds in them, um, usually in a boot. Like the same kind of thing as a clarinet reed? Yeah, similar. Um, although a lot of the organ reeds are metal and, and made of mm. other things, but That probably yeah. helps them last a, a bit longer, I'm, I'm assuming, yeah. yeah. And it also has a 16 foot, which you can hear that. Wow. So it's just a lot of rattle. Yeah. I like a contrabassoon. Yeah. 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 Uh, I can hear that. Fourth family of, um, of, of pipes on an organ is called strings. String pipes are usually very thin. If you listen to it on its own, it's not that stringy, especially this one. Um, because it is a wind instrument. Because it is a wind pipes. instrument. Yeah. And so what they what they did, and you know, especially this became very popular in the 19th century, um, they ended up with celeste stops. And celeste means heavenly, but on an organ it means out of tune on purpose mm. in a very nice way. Um, so if you listen to these two rings of pipes here, this is the gamba, and this is the celeste gamba. Slightly sharp, right? Right. And so, if you play this on its own, it sounds fine, but it's it's out of tune. It's sharp. But the magic happens when you take them and put them together, and you get this really nice chorusing effect. So, what they realized, you know, was that beautiful sound that we associate with orchestral strings. Yeah. 
is the fact that they don't have frets and they're all playing a little bit out of tune with each other. They're, they're, they're micro out of tune with each other. And that creates a very warm sound. And I imagine part of what we're hearing is the acoustical beating. Yeah, exactly. Because those notes are so close to each other, right? That's exactly what we're hearing. And there are different flavors. There's a, a flavor um, of, of Celeste called an Undamaris, uh, which kind of means, you know, under the water or mm. in waves of the water. And uh, um, and that's a very, they, they tune them very close mm. so that that beating is really, really slow and it gives a very gentle, calm sound. But you, you can do it without the Celeste. fascinating because there's so many instruments, especially, in, in, well, specifically in Western music, we're so hyper-focused on getting things exactly in tune. And here, the way to be in tune is to be slightly off. Yeah, and there's also other cultures around the world that, that use um, this concept. Like, uh, a lot of instruments in gamelan um, are tuned so that there are beats. Right. And, gets them, and that, that gives it a sort of nice, celestial, you know, beautiful life to mm. it. And so that's how we do this on the organ. All right, I'm now gonna go inside the organ. Okay, I'm now inside of the organ. So you can see that pipes are different sizes. Obviously the larger ones are lower and the, the, the smaller ones are, 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 are higher. And if you look at some of these small ones, the speaking, uh, the speaking area of the pipe is just from the mouth up, so it's really only about a half mm. inch. Yeah, you know, this is a very high pipe, right? So that's a very, very high pipe, and then some of these are are much lower. You can see these ones here don't actually fit, so they've been mitered, which is which is what we call the bending, mm. so that we can do, you know, so they can fit in. These are eight foot pipes, so the bottom one has an eight foot resonator. And so this is just like a horn. It's it's the same. You, you have to imagine the full length, but it's it's curving. Yeah, exactly. And 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 you know, it, it's thought that that does not appreciably change the sound. Okay. Um, so mitering pipes is done all the all the time. The other thing that can be done to make pipes smaller is capping the pipes. These pipes here. Okay. Um, this is a, a flute, mm -hmm. and they have um, lids on them. And that doubles the length. And right? so what that does is. It makes the pipe sound twice as low as it actually is. Because the air has to go all the way up and then back down to get out? Is that? Yeah, at the expense of cutting the power. Mm. So capped pipes are never as powerful as open pipes. If you look in the back, these wooden pipes, these are the 16-foot bases. But because they're capped, the largest one only has to be 8 feet long. Oh, see yeah. The right there. Oh, that makes sense. I was wondering how so, there could possibly be 16 feet in here. So these pipes here are called chimney flutes. You can see how they have the little chimney there. Mm. And they kind of sound like, you know, quiet, shallow clarinet. These are the diapasons. These are the principal pipes on the organ. And you can see that they're the least the least unique looking ones. Um, oftentimes, these are the ones that you'll see in the facade. So sometimes right. you'll see some pipes up. And you'll be like, oh, that's that tells you there's an organ here. Mm. In general, if you can see a facade, that's usually 1% or less of what's in the organ. Everything else is behind the oh, behind okay. the curtain. Oh, here. interesting. And of course, these here you can see on the wall here are the bases of the strings. Mm. So you can kind of think of those like cellos. Yeah. Um, so these ones here are the reeds. So you can see that this pipe here has a boot, and the reed is actually in this boot. Now, if I take this off here, you can actually see the reed. It's a metal reed mm. here, and then. You put this boot back on, and you blow it. And that's how you get wow. that reedy sound. Yeah. And then here's the higher parts of the strings. You can see they look like those, but not higher. See, these are, you know, baby versions of, of those. Oh, yeah. Right, so this is a higher, right? Um, and this is the wind chest. This is like the, the throat, the chest of the organ. Mm, that's what's pumping all the air through. 
This gets filled with air. Oh, okay. The blower is underneath, and the blower pumps the air. It's kind of like a bagpipe. Yeah, it's, it's always filled with air. Mm -hmm. And then it's got little valves on it. And then when you press a key, it activates an electromagnet, which opens up that valve and allows air to that pipe. And thank you so much for, for giving me a tour here. And it was really neat to get to go inside of the organ. That was really, really amazing. Sure. And uh, come by anytime. Thank you.